Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk about polycystic kidney disease. This is part of our comprehensive step two review course that we are uh, putting together as a service to the world. If you want to get involved, uh, you can wait till the end of the video and we'll give you a link to, to a place to go get involved. So polycystic kidney disease is a, a disease that affects about 12.5 million people worldwide. And it's a problem with an adhesive protein that uh, is not just found in the in the kidneys, and we'll see some extra renal uh, manifestations of it too. But uh, it most uh, dramatically affects the kidneys, and we get these uh, these cysts on the kidneys. In this picture, you can see the kidney is completely covered, and uh, and that may or may not be the typical presentation, but it is. Uh, a presence of multiple cysts bilaterally on the kidneys. And there it comes in two varieties. One is the uh, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease and then the other is the autosomal recessive. And um, the dominant is most common and uh, usually uh, is symptomatic after age 30. Um, Half of them uh, get end-stage renal disease by 60, and uh, m many of them get cerebral aneurysms. Then the recessive disorder, and this is kind of a, co a common pattern, pattern that you see in autosomal dominant versus autosomal recessive. The recessive is often more severe. Um, it's uh, more often found earlier in life, infants and children, and uh, these these kids will almost indefinitely go into renal failure as infants, and uh, it leads to liver fibrosis as well, and and uh, many uh, die from this. So the uh, presentation uh, presents with uh, pain, hematuria, hypertension, renal insufficiency, palpable kidneys. Um, I got, got this picture here. I actually forgot who this guy is, but he's supposed to be famous. He's the only famous person I could find with polycystic kidney disease. And uh, anyway, the extra renal uh, manifestations are uh, hepatic cysts, uh, berry aneurysms, diverticulosis, mitral valve prolapse. And about 50% of these people have a family history. Um, Another uh, important note on the, on the presentation is that many of these go un, undiagnosed. They estimate around 50% go undiagnosed, which is due to the wide spectrum of how uh, severe this can be. So for diagnosis, the most uh, common and the easiest screening test to do is uh, an ultrasound. Um, but you can uh, you can see it on a CT as, or an MRI as we have here. Um, treatment, uh, you want to avoid urinary tract infections because they can uh, wreak havoc on your uh, kidneys. Um, you want to control hypertension with uh, ACEs and ARBs. And uh, in end-stage renal disease, of course, uh, you have to resort to dialysis. So if a patient uh, with uh, polycystic kidney disease presents with a severe headache, what is the next best step? And what I'm getting at here is uh, you want to make sure that they don't have an aneurysm. It's a, a fairly common extra renal manifestation of polycystic kidney disease. So double check uh, a CT for a, a cerebral aneurysm. All right, that was a short video, um, but uh, these are the... Uh, credits of the pictures that we used. Uh, Stephen Kojokaru, that was the guy that I was supposed to remember who has the uh, polycystic kidney disease. And uh, if you want to volunteer, you can comment below or you can go to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer. Thanks.